In the previous video, uh, I talked about how to define functions using recursion or induction. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about how we can also use induction or recursion to define sets. So, to define a set uh, recursively or inductively, Here's what we do. Uh, as the base case, we're going to specify some elements in the set. And as the induction step, uh, we're going to say, uh, give some kind of rule. rules specifying how to construct new elements of the set out of elements that are already in the set. So how to construct new elements of the set out of elements already in the set. Okay, that might not make a whole lot of sense uh, by itself, so let's look at some examples. So, first example is, so suppose this is a Greek capital letter sigma, so sigma is a, this is, <laughs> this is not the kind of sigma that means uh, a sum. So we're just using it as a letter. Um, and uh, maybe that's confusing, but it is a pretty typical to use a capital sigma for this. So if you ever see this talked about somewhere else, it'll use this notation probably. So suppose sigma is a set, uh, a finite set. And uh, we're going to call it an alphabet. Maybe it's the set of all the English letters, but it could be other things. Um, right, then we're going to define the set of strings over sigma. And we'll write that set of strings as sigma star as follows. Um, so first of all, at the base case, we're going to use a special symbol lambda, right? So I'm defining the set sigma star. So this said, the first step is to specify some elements of the set. So here I'm saying, okay, I have this special thing called lambda. That's an element of the set. And lambda denotes the empty string. We need some kind of symbol because I can't just literally leave the board blank. But if we could, somehow that, I mean, really we're thinking of it as being nothing. Um, uh, and then we say if uh, W is some element of sigma star and X is an element of my alphabet set, okay, then wx is also in sigma star. So, and this doesn't mean multiplication, this just literally means put one next to the other, kind of list them right one after the other. Okay, uh, so if we have some string, we're thinking of this as a set of strings, whatever that means. If we have a string that's already in this set, and we have some element of our alphabet, then we can always kind of glue the letter onto the end of the string, and that thing is also a string, and that goes in our set too. Okay, and we can keep doing this. So let's actually uh, do a concrete example of this. So 
see how this works. So, for example, we could we could say uh, our alphabet is the set A, B, C. Okay, so we're only going to use the letters A, B, and C. Um, and the way I like to think of this, I like to think of this as kind of happening in stages. So uh, this is like stage zero is when we just start out with, the only thing we have is um, you know, whatever we specified as the base case. And then every subsequent stage we run this rule, or maybe there's multiple rules, we run the rule once. And we see what else gets added to our set. And then we can run it again and we might add some more things. We run it again, we add some more things. Um, and basically, um, the actual set we get is, is if we kind of keep running the rule infinitely often, um, that's the set that we end up with. So uh, I'm going to write sigma star sub zero to denote uh, this the, kind of the stage zero. So sigma star zero is right. the only thing in that set is the lambda, right? That's the empty string. Um, for step for stage one, well, let's think about this. So this says, um, right, for anything that's already in our set sigma star, which the only thing we have so far is lambda, right? Uh, and then for anything in our alphabet, okay, so that could be A, B, or C, we're going to take that thing, in this case lambda, uh, plus kind of glue it on to whatever the letter in our alphabet is, and that thing is going to go back in our set, sigma star. So this is going to have, uh, so we still have lambda in here, right, from before. We just kind of copy it over. We're only ever going to add more stuff. Um, but then I also have, you know, this followed by A, this followed by B, or this followed by C, right? So these are all in my set now, too. And uh, in this case, we want to think of lambda as being like the empty string. So I don't actually want to write them out like this. Even formally, this is what it says, but um, I'm just going to say, let's not, when I've got lambda followed by some other stuff, let's not bother writing the lambda because it's supposed to be empty. So we just won't write it. Um, technically, it's there, but we'll just write it like this. Okay? And then stage two is we take all of these things and we copy those, plus uh, we get all the stuff where we take any one of these and then add on a single letter to the end, right? So we're gonna still have an empty and then A, B, C, but then I can take anything in here and add one letter, so I get, uh, so I already had what I get from adding a letter to lambda. If I add a letter onto one of these, I'll get like A, 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 B, A, C, a, B, 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 C, C, A, C, B, C, C. Okay? And if I were to do, you know, the third stage, I would get, I would end up with, I take any of one of these things and stick a single letter on the end of it, and I'm going to add those all back into my set. So I'm going to end up with, like, all the things that have either 0, 1, 2, or 3 letters in them. Um, and you can see that after n stages, I'm going to have all the strings uh, all the possible combinations of n or fewer uh, letters. And if we keep doing this sort of, you know, think about doing this infinity times, and that's actually the set sigma star. And formally we could say, you know, if you wanted to be really pedantic about it, you could say, well, it's the union uh, as n goes from zero to infinity of sigma star sub n. So something ends up in sigma star if it ever shows up in any of these stages. Um, so that's something we, we can think about what this recursive definition of a set means. Let me do another example. formulas of propositional logic so as follows 
So in the base case, I'm going to say that uh, true, false, and then variables like, we'll call them x, y, z, dot, dot, dot. Uh, I'm going to write like a scripty F, scripty capital F for the set of all uh, formulas in propositional logic. So this is just saying the base case is t true is a formula, false is a formula, and any single variable by itself is a formula. Okay, and then in the inductive step, I say if t and q are elements of f, then, uh, well, I want to say not p is in f. Uh, also, p and q is in f. And then also p or q is in f. And I could go on, I could say, you know, p implies q, whatever kind of symbols we want to include, we could, we could list them out. I'm not going to write all of them right now. Um, but so, this is going to define all the possible formulas uh, of propositional logic, right? So stage one is, or stage zero is we just have these things, right? At stage one, we start to get things like, um, you know, well, let's see, so x is in there. So I can always put not of anything that's in there. So like I could have not x. So that's now going to be in the set. I could also have like true and y. Okay. If I do the next stage, I'm going to get like if I now that I have true and y in there, I could do uh, not true and y, or I could do true and y or z. Okay. And so like the more times I repeat that process, the bigger and bigger formulas that I'm going to get as I'm taking formulas that were there and you know, combining them with and, or, not, that kind of thing. Okay, and if we do this, sort of imagine doing this infinitely many times, we're gonna get all the possible formulas of propositional logic.